kickoffs around the corner, here's more Gainesville game day. Well, we saw Antonio Morrison practicing when fall practices began, but we didn't really know his status for the season. He's going to play today. Coach McElwain addressed that. Mouth of Mac, sponsored by the Village at Gainesville. What he did just at the beginning of camp, it's just I, I, uh, there again, what normally was a 10 to 12 month recovery, he did in six months. And, and uh, you know, we've had the doctor in a bunch, uh, probably more so for <laughs> me not believing it. Um, and yet the strength levels, all the tests, uh, believe it or not, it actually is tighter than the other one. And, uh, you know, again, that's a credit to him and what he did in the off season to prepare himself to help this football team. So Pat, what's your take on Morrison's return? You know, I've been hearing in the summer whispers that he might be back sooner than everybody thought. When we saw him laying on the ground in the Birmingham Bowl, screaming in agony, I think everybody's heart went out to him. And you thought, here's a guy who everybody thought was going to go pro. Now he may never play again. For him to come back this quickly is a testament to the trainers, to the doctors, to him. I mean, there's so many people involved to get him back. It's stunning that he's back this soon, but I did hear that he was going to come back sooner than a lot of people thought. Remarkable that he is back. So inspirational to his teammates. And a good defense just got that much better. Yeah, you know, he's the guy who lines them up, and I think that's a big factor to have him back. And to me, the biggest question going into the fall with this team was middle linebacker. Who's going to play there? You've got to have a great – you can't be a good defense without a middle linebacker. It's just like baseball. you got to be strong up the middle. Now that they've got him, we don't know how it's going to hold up. We don't know how long he's going to be able to play, especially the first game. But it certainly makes him a much better defense to have him back there. Uh, he's a really good player. And now there's less question marks at that linebacker position. Absolutely. It, it, it just adds so much more to the defense. Right now, though, let's pick some winners in today's picks. The Picks, sponsored by Madiri Caretenders. Our first game is Louisville and Auburn in Atlanta on CBS 4 at 3.30. This is going to be a fantastic game and one that I cannot wait to watch. Uh, I will go with Auburn with this one. I'm not so sure Will Muschamp in week one makes that much of a difference, but I think Auburn from top to bottom is just better than Louisville. You know, the thing that Louis, one of Louisville's strengths on de defense is to rush the passer, but uh, the way Auburn's offense is, there's not a lot of drop back passing. So yeah, I like Auburn as well in this game. Too much on both sides of the ball. Next up is Texas versus Notre Dame. I'm going to go with the Golden Domers over the Go Domed one. Of course, Charlie Strong. We'd like to root for Charlie, but I just don't. I, I mean, Swoops is a good quarterback, but uh, he finally won the job. I'm just not sure they've got enough yet to compete with Notre Dame. And Brian Kelly coached at my alma mater, so this is a completely biased pick in this one. But I think Brian Kelly at home with that offense, Malik Zaire, everyone is raving about him in that system. Probably won't lose much from Everett Golson, even though he's at Florida State now. I think Notre Dame actually wins this one going away quite convincingly. Uh, our next game, Arizona State and Texas A&M. This should be a good one. This is a night game. Uh, SEC West always with a lot to prove, but I think Texas A&M will start the season out strong. John Chavis, the new defensive coordinator there, we'll see what he does today against a very good off Arizona State offense. I like the Aggies. Yeah, Arizona State has a great offense and uh, a pretty good defense too. John Chavis is still coaching the same guys that stunk last year though. I know that he's going to make a difference, but I don't think it's going to be right away. And I've got Arizona State as a sleeper pick to be in the Final Four. I certainly can't pick against them in the first game. Next game up, Alabama, Wisconsin, and Jerry World. And I tell you what, if it was Wisconsin could throw the ball, I might think they have a chance. Alabama so unsettled at quarterback. I mean, it could be any one of five guys, but uh, because they're a running team and Alabama has the best front seven in the country, I'm going to stick with the Tide. When it's strength on strength, but your strength is Alabama's defensive line, your strength really doesn't matter. I think Alabama wins this one going away. Wisconsin's got a new head coach. They lost their star running back from a season ago. Wisconsin, I just don't think, has enough pieces to even compete in this one. And, of course, our final game, New Mexico State versus Florida. We don't know a whole lot about New Mexico State. We're being completely They're the honest Aggies, right I know here. that. Yeah. They're the Aggies, right? I see that right up on the thing. So. Yeah, look at that. How about that? Um, but uh, I'm going Florida with this one, and I think it's going to be uh, a huge win for Florida here today. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to pick against Florida in this game, as even with all the questions and all the issues in the offensive line and the quarterback situation. New Mexico State, I saw, I think it was CBS Sports Line, had them ranked 124th out of 128. Oof. Oof. Uh, they're, they're building, they're rebuilding, but they're not rebuilding from anything good. So <laughs> they're just building, and I, I think Florida, uh, again, it's opening night. You're going to have some jitters. Florida coaches, no matter how great they've been, have had some jitters. So 
uh, you're going to see some, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be, uh, as, you know, you try to stress, strive to be perfect all season. This will probably be the worst this offense has looked, even though it's a bad opposition, but I still think Florida wins easily. Uh, the Gators won easily last year, too. They defeated Eastern Michigan 63-0, to and we thought, oh, this spread offense, it's going to be nice. The Gators are going to score points. We were wrong. We, we were wrong. <laughs> we were so wrong. We really didn't have any more answers to the questions. But I pose one last question to you, Pat. What will Gator fans be talking about after this win? Well, knowing Gator fans, if they win convincingly, they'll be looking up to see where the national championship game is played. <laughs> it's in Glendale, by the way, so you don't have to look it up. Um, but I, I think if they struggle, they're going to wonder if maybe this is more of the same that they've been seeing before. But the bottom line is, I, I think if they walk out of that and they go, hey, we won, nobody got hurt, they're going to be happy. This is a long season. This is the beginning of not only it, but the McIlwain era. And they need to take everything with a little bit of grain of salt, you know, because it's, it's always, uh, the first games are always a little jittery. Well, it's time we get out of here. Folks, enjoy some college football. It is finally back. We'd like to thank Gatorland Toyota for making this possible. Chelsea Brown, Gainesville Sun columnist Pat Dooley. I'm Phil Byrne. We'll see you next week. Join Phil Byrne and Pat Dooley on Gainesville Game Day every Saturday morning at 11 only on Gainesville CBS 4.